humidity, fresh air exchange, and light. These are the three main environmental factors that mushrooms need to grow, and keeping each of these in its optimal range is the aim of building a fruiting space for mushroom cultivation. A grow tent is an enclosed fruiting space equipped with systems that can achieve this and allow your mushrooms to thrive. Let's start by going over exactly what conditions we're trying to create, and then I'll talk about how to build automated systems that can maintain them. For humidity, you'll want to aim for between 75 and 90%, depending on the species you're growing, so your grow tent will need to be equipped with a system to generate enough water vapor to maintain this. Fresh air exchange is vital because just like us animals, mushrooms take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Similar to how a human would eventually run out of air if left in an enclosed space for too long, mushrooms won't grow properly if CO2 is allowed to build up in the tent. You want a ventilation system that can pull all the stale air out of your tent and replace it with fresh air on a regular basis. Light is less of a make or break factor in mushroom cultivation since they don't photosynthesize like plants, but they do need sunlight to form nice fruits. 12 hours a day of gentle light is what usually works best. A bonus factor to consider is temperature. Some varieties like Blue oysters tend to grow better in cooler temperatures, and some like reishi tend to prefer warmer temperatures. In general though, most mushroom varieties will grow just fine at room temperature, so as long as you set your grow tent up where you can keep it between 60 and 75 degrees, you should be just fine. You may choose to grow different species seasonally if the temperature in your space changes throughout the year. So now that we know what we're going for, let's figure out how to put this thing together. All the supplies I'm using here will be linked down below. For the tent itself, there's tons of prefabricated options out there, most of which are designed for cannabis use, but can easily be fitted out for mushrooms. I built my tent here out of a PVC frame and vinyl sheeting, and while I think it looks pretty sweet, it probably isn't practical for most people. It took me a ton of time to plan and build this thing, and it ended up being just as expensive as the prefab options. Inside your tent, you can just use a wire shelf like this to hold your mushrooms. I recommend adding a coat of waterproof paint if you do this, so it doesn't rust. For my ventilation system, I use an exhaust fan to pull the old air out of my tent as well as an intake fan to push in new air. Some people exclusively use an exhaust fan and rely on passive intake through zippers and seams, but I find that having a dedicated intake fan as well allows for more control over the system. Plus if you want, you can filter your intake. You want your exhaust fan to pull air from the bottom of your tent since carbon dioxide sinks below oxygen. Most prefab tents have a bunch of different ports for you to connect your ducting to. You'll then need to connect an inline fan to the ducting coming out of your tent. The exhaust duct should ideally vent out the window because the air will contain spores which can be harmful in large quantities. If this really isn't an option for your space, you can also filter the exhaust, but you'll have to change the filter pretty often and it'll probably bring humidity into your area, which is not ideal. A backdraft damper should also be added to your exhaust ducting to prevent airflow into your tent from the outside when your fans are off, which could bring in spores and bugs. The intake is pretty similar to the exhaust, using an inline fan to push air into your tent from the room. The intake system I use also takes care of humidity, so it makes sense to talk about them together. Air is pulled through this HEPA filter by the intake fan and then flows down here into this plastic tub before coming back up and into the grow tent. The tub is filled with water and contains an ultrasonic mist maker which generates a ton of water vapor, as well as a UV filter to help keep the water clean. With this setup, I can control whether or not the air coming into the tent is humid based on if I have the mist maker on or off during my intake cycles, eliminating the need for a standalone humidity system. The intake is piped into the opposite corner of the tent as the exhaust, creating a diagonal flow of air through the tent, which ensures that the entire thing is purged and replaced with new air every time. The tub you use for the system should be watertight and have snap closures like this to prevent mist leakage. I can recommend House of Hydro for the mist maker. I'm using their 5 disc mist maker here and it's more than enough for my 3x5 tent. If your tent is smaller, you can easily get away with the 3 disc one. The UV sterilizer pump isn't required, but can reduce the buildup of algae and other nasty stuff in your tub so you don't have to clean it as often. The the construction of the tub is simple, just cut two holes in the lid and attach flanges that match the size of the ducting you're using. House of Hydro makes 4 inch flanges, which I can recommend for this if you're using a 4 inch fan for your intake. You want to seal the edges of these flanges with silicone to prevent leakage. Then just cut a notch in the side of your tub to pass the wire for your mist maker through, and you're good to go. For lighting, I'm using these Barina T8 pink grow lights, but white light is also fine. Mushrooms mostly utilize the blue and green wavelengths of light, so just don't get purple lights because those have more red than blue. I have my lights connected to an outlet timer that keeps them on for 12 hours a day. Since most people will be using an opaque tent and therefore the lights will have to go inside the tent, make sure you get lights that can handle the high humidity levels. LED panels or string lights generally work great for this purpose. The last thing you might want to consider installing is a circulator fan. If your tent is on the smaller side, this probably isn't necessary, but if you have a larger tent, then this can help ensure that there aren't any pockets of built up CO2 and conditions are consistent throughout the tent. I have this oscillating fan running 24 7 on its lowest setting. Now let's talk about programming this thing. I'm using a combination of two controllers, this AC Infinity Controller 69, as well as a humidity gauge. 
The fans are both connected to this controller, and the mist maker is connected to the humidity gauge, which is plugged into this adapter, which then allows it to be connected to the controller as well. I currently have all three of these inputs programmed to come on for one minute every 20 minutes via the controller. The humidity gauge is then set to turn on the mister if the humidity drops below 82.5%. The result is that every 20 minutes, the fans and the humidity gauge turn on, and then if the humidity is below the lower limit, the humidity gauge will trigger the mist maker to also turn on until it reaches the proper level. Therefore, your tank gets air on a set cycle and humidity when it needs it. When running a system like this, where the intake and exhaust are run simultaneously, it's important to maintain a slight negative pressure during venting. This just means that the exhaust is expelling slightly more air than the intake is pushing into your tent, which will prevent spores and other nasty stuff from inside the tent from getting out through the seams into your living space. I have a slightly more powerful exhaust fan to account for this need for negative pressure, but you can also totally just use the same fan and program your exhaust to a slightly higher level. If you're filtering your intake, you might even want to use the same level because that will reduce the airflow in slightly. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once you have your tent all set up, you'll want to spend some time tuning it to make sure that the conditions are consistent before introducing your mushrooms. For example, if your humidifier can't raise the humidity enough in a one minute venting period, you might want to increase that to two. If your humidity fluctuates too much, you could decrease the interval between on cycles. How your tent operates will depend not only on the setup, but also the ambient environmental conditions of where you live. So it's best to just use this video as a guide to build upon. This is an overview of a system that's worked really well for me, but you might have different requirements, so I encourage you to play around with these ideas. Any system that can meet the humidity, fresh air exchange, and light requirements will work great for mushroom cultivation. Good luck as you embark on this journey, and happy growing!